Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Secretary General of State for Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Affairs of the UK of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, James Cleverly, while accompanying His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the UK for the coronation of His Majesty King Charles III. His Royal Highness expressed gratitude and appreciation for the warm reception and hospitality during the reception and coronation. He highlighted that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, is committed to strengthening bilateral cooperation that that promotes development across multiple sectors, benefiting both countries and their peoples. He highlighted the long-standing relations between the UK and Bahrain, noting the importance of continuing to strengthen the partnership designed to achieve common goals. During the meeting, regional and global issues of common interest were discussed. Cleverly expressed his gratitude for His Majesty the King's and His Royal Highness's attendance at the reception and coronation of His Majesty King Charles III. He emphasized the historic strong ties between the two kingdoms, which span over 200 years. He added that the long-standing relations between the UK and Bahrain is made possible by a joint commitment to strengthening bilateral cooperation to achieve common goals. The executive and legislative authorities held a meeting to discuss the draft law adopting the 2023-2024 state general budget. The meeting was chaired by the representative council speaker Ahmed Lamsalam and the Shura Council chairman Ali Saleh and the Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. The speaker affirmed that the legislative authority prioritizes citizens' interests in implementation of the aspirations of His Majesty the King and the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He hailed the efforts of the heads and members of the Financial and Economic Affairs committees and the two councils and the government's team responsible for the preparation of the state general budget and the meeting's constructive discussions. Alam Salam noted the legislative authority's keenness on achieving the royal directives of improving citizens' living standards and developing all programs to achieve their basic needs. The Shura Council chairman affirmed that consensus between the legislative and executive authorities in discussing the details of the state general budget embodies the directives of His Majesty the King on continuing cooperation and coordination for the nation's interest. Salah noted that discussions and proposals and studying them with the government affirms the keenness to draft a budget bill that supports initiatives and plans that enhance Bahrain's financial and economic stability and reach fiscal balance. He expressed appreciation to the efforts of the heads and members of the Financial and Economic Affairs Committees of the Shura and Representatives Councils and their keenness to discuss all details related to the general budget. He also thanked the Minister of Finance and Government team for their keenness to provide all data and answer the questions regarding the general budget. The Minister affirmed that the interests of citizens are a priority and increasing meetings with the legislative authority to discuss the general budget in the presence of relevant ministers. He indicated that the principles and foundations that were relied upon when drafting the draft law approving the general budget is maintaining financial stability and sustainable economic growth, creating promising opportunities for citizens, adhering to the fiscal balance program, continuing to improving the efficiency of government services and developing performance. The minister affirmed that the government continues to implement more more plans and programs in coordination with the legislative authority. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed Lamsalam, saluted the national press, hailing its role in showcasing Bahrain's development achievements. He highlighted the cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities to support national press and reinforce its role. The Speaker commended the efforts made by the Ministry of Information, Bahrain Journalists Association, and other media institutions. He also paid homage to veteran journalists and successive media to impress cadres. He commended the role of the national press in covering the work of the Council of Representatives, describing it as a strategic partner to the party. Parliament. The Shura Council held its weekly session presided over by its chairman Ali Saleh. The council was notified of the referral of a draft law ratifying the agreement between Bahrain and Japan for the mutual encouragement and protection of investment to the Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security Committee and notified the Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee. The session discussed the report of the Services Committee regarding a draft law to add a new article to Decree Law 78 of 2006 regarding unemployment insurance and decided to return the report to the committee for further study. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, stated that Bahrain Press Day is an opportunity to value the efforts of the press and media community and their contributions to promoting freedom of opinion and expression. He commended the journalists and media staff who build on generations' achievements and contribute to supporting the national press. He urged the press and media to exert further efforts to bolster respect of human rights, consolidate Bahrain's long-standing heritage that lays a foundation for coexistence, tolerance, peace and mutual respect between people and religions. The
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, participated in the meeting of the Arab League in its extraordinary session to discuss developments in the Syrian crisis, which was held at the headquarters of the Arab League, headed by the Egyptian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sam Shikri, and in the presence of the Arab Foreign Ministers and the Secretary General of the Arab League. The meeting issued a resolution affirming the renewed commitment of the Arab countries to preserving Syria's sovereignty, territorial integrity, and stability, emphasizing the importance of continuing efforts aimed at helping Syria. The resolution stressed the need to take practical and effective steps to gradually resolve the crisis in line with Security Council Resolution No. 2254. The decision stipulated the approval of the resumption of the participation of delegations of the government of Syria in the meetings of the Council of Arab League and all its affiliated organizations and agencies as of May 7. The decision also provided for the formation of a ministerial liaison committee to follow up on the implementation of the Amman Statement and to continue direct dialogue with the Syrian government. Dr. Zayani also participated in the meeting of the Arab League in its extraordinary session to discuss developments and the tra tragic situation in Sudan. The ministerial meeting issued a resolution emphasizing the necessity of full respect for Sudan's sovereignty, unity, and territorial integrity, non-interference in its internal affairs, dealing with the current crisis as an internal Sudanese affair, preserving the Sudanese national state institutions, and preventing their collapse. The decision also provided for the formation of an Arab ministerial contact group to undertake communication with the Sudanese parties, influential countries, regional and internationally and relevant international organizations. The decision also stipulated that the contact group would coordinate with the General Secretariat and organizations to provide urgent humanitarian and medical support to citizens and displaced persons in South Sudan. The Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan al naimi congratulated the press and media community on Bahrain Press Day. He praised the role of the press in highlighting national achievements, noting the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He expressed thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for designating the annual day in tribute to the national press and its pivotal role down generations. He commended the efforts of the press and media personnel in highlighting Bahrain's achievements while exercising the role professionally and competently. Dr. Naimi Amy held the role of the youth who work in tandem with veterans, which contributed to achieving tangible strides, noting that the press and media sector embraces young talents and provides training opportunities, whether in the conventional or social media. He reiterated commitment to support the role of the press and media to keep pace with the new developments while adhering to media ethics. The Minister of Works, Engineer Ibrahim Al Hawaj, paid an inspection visit to the fourth expansion project of the Tubli Sewage Network in the presence of the capital governor, Sheikh Rashid bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa. The minister affirmed that the project will double the capacity of the current plant from 200,000 cubic meters to 400,000 per day and improving the environmental situation in the region. He explained that this project represents one of the important strategic projects that the ministry is working to implement, which will be reflected in the operation of sewage networks in line with the urban and investment expansion witnessed by the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila Hassan, attended the consultative meeting of the GCC country's Ministers of Health held in Al Ula, Saudi Arabia, chaired by the President of the current session, Amani Minister of Health, Dr. Hilal Al Septi. The Minister of Health highlighted the Health Council's important role in bolstering health cooperation and integration between GCC countries and implementation of the approaches of their leaders to achieve common goals. The Ministers discussed the means to develop the Gulf Health System and enhance aspects of integration and interdependence between GCC countries in the health field in a manner that enhances joint Gulf action in the health, preventive, curative, rehabilitative and health awareness fields and provide the best health care services in GCC countries. The Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed Jama, inaugurated the activities of JEDEX 2023 at Exhibition World Bahrain in the presence of the Minister of Tourism, Fatma Sayrafi, the Minister of Youth Affairs, Rahman Tawfiqi, and officials. The event witnessed a participation of 53 higher education institutions from 10 countries. The Minister of Education delivered a speech in which he emphasized that the Kingdom of Bahrain's hosting of this world exhibition, which is being organized by the International Group for Exhibitions and Trade in cooperation with the Ministry of Education, comes in the context of the Kingdom's interest in the leadership of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister with everything that would advance the education sector in all its stages, especially higher education, as a fundamental pillar for development in various fields. Well, this is a very important exhibition. Uh, it comes at a time when students are about to graduate, talking about high school students. Uh, the purpose behind this exhibition is just to offer the students all the academic counseling required 
Uh, we have a number of international universities participating from the United States, from uh, Britain, from Europe, from different universities in the region. Uh, this will give the students the chance, the chance to speak to the administrative body of those universities, navigate the uh, available options. Uh, we believe in the Ministry of Education and the Higher Education Council that such exhibitions will contribute to the students' awareness and knowledge about the required specializations and disciplines across different academic institutions. And I think it's very important that we continue to um, uh, organize such exhibitions in cooperation with a highly repute, reputed international organizations uh, because it actually uh, uh, contributes to what students can achieve in the future uh, based on the right counseling that they get for their academic life. So our services are completely free. So we do student counseling. So if you come to me saying that you want a certain course like mechanical engineering or cyber security, we'll go through all our panel universities, work about 150 universities. And what we'll do, we'll try and find the best course, kind of specified to your budget, kind of what modules you want to study. We'll kind of go through and find the right university for you. We'll do the application for you. We'll get the offer letter. We'll help with the visa application. Everything really from A to Z. So we'll do the student accommodation um, once you arrive. Because I'm in the UK and there for everything basically. I see students all the way to graduation. I still speak to students now that are working full time. Uh, I'm representing Ajman University. Ajman University is the first private university in Ajman and uh, we are here, we are there in Ajman since uh, uh, more than 15 years. Okay, We have all the programs, all the majors. We have College of Medicine, College of Dentistry, College of Law and uh, Business. Uh, so for, for all students we have, uh, you know, it's a very independent campus with all the facilities inside the campus itself including the hostel, uh, you know, uh, gym, everything, you know, inside the campus itself. And uh, yeah, uh, so we, are, we, we would like to welcome all the students from Bahrain to our university. The De Montfort University has a heritage of 152 years based out of the city of Leicester from UK. It started its new campus in Dubai two years ago. And the Dubai campus is in the Dubai International Academic City. We have started uh, two years ago and now we have around 700 students in the campus with 10 undergraduate and 10 postgraduate programs. And taking part in an event like this in Bahrain is to showcase the possibilities in a, in a country nearby so that the students from this place won't really miss the Gulf background. They still continue to be in the same background, but at the same time they get a UK certificate. ASU is one of the leading private universities in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, it's been established in 2004, and now we have uh, many undergraduate and postgraduate programs, and we have also programs with London South Bank University that we are hosting the programs in Bahrain. Yes, and the university has been working for a while to be one of the most international universities in the region. We have got uh, a good international ranking. Uh, today in this exhibition, we are delighted to be here, participating in this exhibition, which we think is very important. Uh, and uh, we've been awarded uh, Four awards. I'm from Global College of Engineering and Technology. It's a private college located in Oman, in Muscat, and affiliated with the University of the West of England in Bristol, the UK. Uh, our programs are specialized in engineering and uh, technology-related programs. Uh, we offer multiple programs, for example, uh, robotics and instrumentation, uh, cybersecurity. We offer also engineering management, uh, environmental management. So our programs, uh, really, they serve the, uh, the vision. Uh, and also they serve the, uh, the fourth industrial revolution. The Secretary General of the Arab League, Ahmed Abul Ghait, received the credentials of Ambassador Fozi Zainal as permanent representative of Bahrain to the Arab League. Ambassador Zainal conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King to the Secretary General, praising the distinguished relations between Bahrain and the Arab League and praised the League's tangible role in promoting solidarity and joint Arab cooperation. She expressed her aspiration to complete the path of the representatives of the Kingdom of Bahrain in a way that serves the goals and aspirations of the Arab countries towards enhancing security, stability and development. The Secretary General appreciated the role of the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King in activating joint Arab action. He wished Zainal continued success in her duties. 
On its third day, British celebrations marking the historic coronation of His Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland continue across the country. It is scheduled that the British monarch, members of the royal family and invitees will attend a concert at Windsor Castle, west of London, where the landmarks and areas of natural beauty in the United Kingdom will be illuminated as part of the largest official ceremony the country has witnessed in 70 years and in a luxurious ceremony dating back to a thousand years. The British community in Bahrain under the direction of the UK Embassy have prepared an event for King Charles III's coronation ceremony, which took place at St. Christopher's Anglican Cathedral in Manama yesterday. The British ambassador to Bahrain, Roderick Drummond, shared his views on the coronation day festivities in the kingdom, where the weekend featured volunteer charity initiatives, a musical performance, and official events, including business forums and society meetups that are planned for everyone who lives in Bahrain. It's wonderful to be here uh, tonight at the service at St. Christopher's Cathedral, um, which is such a fitting part of what has been a wonderful day of national celebration uh, in the United Kingdom and across the world uh, for the coronation of uh, King Charles III. It was very emotional for me to see today uh, His Majesty King, Is uh, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Sir Salman both going into Westminster Abbey and taking up their positions as honoured guests at really at the heart of Westminster Abbey um, to share that uh, the feeling that communion at the, at the heart of the service with um, their friend uh, King Charles III uh, that was very special and symbolises how close the UK and Bahrain uh, are. Um, there have been so many wonderful uh, celebrations um, here in the Kingdom, different community groups, different schools. Um, I spent some time with the Royal Navy today. They were celebrating. But the reminder here tonight in the church that at its core, it's a very spiritual thing, the coronation of a king. That um, it uh, And the beauty of the singing tonight, the beauty of the readings, the way that was all done, really reminded us of the the beauty uh, of the service we saw today where King Charles committed himself to the service of the people uh, and uh, we, we then all wit witnessed all the different parts of the coronation. Uh, so first of all we congratulate um, the British people and the members of the Commonwealth um, to the coronation of um, Charles III, King Charles III. Uh, for us in Germany, it's um, you know we have a very special relationship to especially to this king. I mean, but but to the whole um, uh, family because uh, part of the family comes from Germany, and um, uh, King Charles has been uh, educated uh, partly in Germany, and uh, so we are very happy that his first visit abroad was also to Germany. We held a speech in, in German and in English, uh, you know, jumping from one language to the other. Um, um, and so it's a, it's a very special day for us Germans today to have this, uh, this king who is very close to our hearts and uh, to our country. Yes, we're here today to celebrate the coronation of King Charles. And as His Excellency the uh, British Ambassador said in his address, it was wonderful during the coronation in Westminster Abbey today to see His Majesty King Hamid there along with the Crown Prince, Prince Salman. And it was just a wonderful celebration the whole day. Unfortunately the weather in London was nowhere near like the weather here in, in Bahrain but we're very fortunate and so the opportunity to come here and uh, pray and give thanks, worship uh, in St Christopher's Cathedral, it's, it's fantastic and that's thanks for the coexistence and tolerance and the, the freedom to practice our beliefs and religions here in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The British ambassador to Bahrain, Roderick Drummond, said the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom have always made regional and international security a top priority. He also spoke about bilateral trade as well as cooperation in the education sector. So I look at it uh, in terms of the, the work we do in, in different areas. So, uh, for example, in the uh, security and uh, political uh, space, then we have very close co uh, cooperation uh, on security, on defence, uh, with the presence um, in Bahrain of the Naval Support Facility and the UK Maritime Component Command, enabling us to um, work closely with um, all of our partners in the region, but through Bahrain, through our base uh, here in Bahrain and so many other areas where we work closely in security um, to mutual uh, benefit. Um, and when we look at the economic uh, sphere, then um, our 
trade and investment relationships are, are growing um, fantastically. Now 2.6 billion pounds annually, two-way trade in goods and services, the benefit of both uh, economies and both peoples. Um, and so many new links opening up, new British companies coming here, setting up uh, their offices, setting up new um, offers that they have here, new university links um, in so many different fields, uh, broadening out the relation between our young people and helping develop the, um, the professionals and the scientists and technologists of the future. And I think that's really absolutely vital. We see that in the um, the people-to-people -people exchanges. So when we um, were able to open up our visa um, arrangements for Bahrain last year, we've seen many um, people uh, take advantage of that, whether it's to go for tourism, for study, for business. Uh, we want people to treat um, the UK as their second home, just as uh, British people feel at home here in Bahrain. And, uh, and we see people doing that um, on, a, on a large scale. And we've got further improvements to that visa service coming uh, starting in February next year, which uh, with the new electronic travel authorization, that'll make it even easier. Um, so that's really going uh, extraordinarily well. And um, I, again, in terms of the looking after the British community here, um, I, f I find that you know we have um, uh, a really strong British community that's uh, working in so many different fields, playing its part in the uh, continued development of Bahrain. And when there are um, problems, people have problems here, they're resolved very um, well, very smoothly, with excellent cooperation from uh, the Bahraini authorities. Um, and so we've had a, you know, a number of cases like that in this last year that have been resolved excellently, with, and I really salute the cooperation we get here in Bahrain. Meanwhile, the British ambassador to Bahrain also touched upon how cooperation between Bahrain and the UK has helped advance reforms and human rights in the kingdom. He praised the decision makers and hoped to see the cooperation between both countries continue. So I think one of the unique features of our relationship here um, is that we've uh, a very, uh, in, in a number of areas, we work closely um, with, uh, with our programs to help um, and support um, Bahraini-led reform in different areas. And we've seen a lot of that over the last five to ten years in sometimes complex and sensitive areas around um, justice and, uh, and human rights. Um, and that's gone very well, and that's helped support um, some really progressive changes here in Bahrain, which uh, I salute the, uh, the decision makers who've opened up the alternative sentencing, who've passed the, uh, the juvenile justice uh, law and, and are putting that into effect, um, the work of the, the, um, the independent human rights bodies, all these things are fantastic. But we're also opening that up in areas like space collaboration, uh, in, uh, in areas of healthcare, in, uh, in areas of education, where again I think there's a, there's a way, a role for government to uh, work together to help bring in technical assistance and help um, move things uh, forward where Bahrain wants to make a move forward. So I think we'll see more of that economic and science and technological cooperation in, in the next decade. Uh, so, so that's really going very well. The Bahrain Society chairperson Heather Harper spoke about how the society has helped foster a closer friendship between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom. First, I'd like to say that the Bahrain Society is honoured that His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa is the patron of our society and the President is the Bahrain Ambassador to the United Kingdom, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. Um, the society was formed about 60 years ago as a friendship society between our two countries um, to provide a, a forum for Bahrainis and British people to, um, with particular interest in Bahrain to meet and maintain those friendships in a, a London presence. Um, we have social events throughout the year um, and have supported a number of cultural and charitable events in London including supporting Bahraini students studying at British academic institutions. Bahraini Pers embodied a long history of Bahraini-UK relations which are based on a legacy of distinguished friendship and cooperation in various fields. More in this report. The authentic Bahraini pearls formed over time an important part of the civilization and ancient history of the Kingdom of Bahrain 
and a link with world countries, including the United Kingdom, led by the late Queen Elizabeth II, who has always expressed admiration for the precious Bahraini pearls. Her Majesty the late Queen admired authentic Bahraini pearls and was keen on wearing them on the most important official and family occasions and ceremonies in her pearl necklace and earrings. The pearl earrings are a gift presented to her in 1947 by the ruler of Bahrain at the time, the late Sheikh Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, on the occasion of her marriage to the late Prince Philip. It consisted of seven Bahraini pearls, two of which were transformed into earrings that she wore for the first time in 1952 during her tour in Canada. And then she and her family adorned them on many occasions. Bahraini pearls strengthened the historical relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the friendly United Kingdom. The Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom have economic ties that have contributed to strengthening the bonds of joint relations and increasing their depth and communication throughout history. More on this report. The relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom have a special bond that reflects the extent of interdependence and compatibility between the two friendly countries in various fields, especially the economic field, within the framework of the keenness and continuous support of His Majesty the King and Her Majesty the late Queen Elizabeth II. The economic relations between Bahrain and Britain are witnessing remarkable development and growth, adding to the depth of the bilateral partnership, which dates back to an ancient history that brought them together, especially in the economic, investment and banking sectors. These activities have also been facilitated by the agreements signed by the two countries in this regard, such as the agreement to encourage and protect investments in 2006, a cooperation agreement between the Bahrain Stock Exchange and the London Stock Exchange in 2007, and two memorandums of understanding between the governments of the two countries in areas related to the customs sector in 2008, and many other agreements that bear witness to the depth of the deep-rooted historical relations between the two kingdoms, leadership, government and peoples. The Kingdom of Bahrain welcomes the Saudi U.S. initiative to start preliminary talks in Jeddah between representatives of the Sudanese armed forces and the rapid support forces in Sudan to reach a cessation of military operations and an end to the conflict. This comes with the mediation of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the U.S. and the support of the endorsement of the Quartet, the Arab League and the tripartite mechanism represented by the United Nations Mission, the African Union and the Intergovernmental Authority on Development. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs in a statement reiterated the Kingdom of Bahrain's call to all parties in Sudan to prevail wisdom and serious commitment to stopping the bloodshed, providing protection for civilians and diplomats, facilitating the delivery of humanitarian aid to the affected areas, and completing the political framework agreement to reach a final agreement that meets the aspirations of the brotherly Sudanese people for security, peace, stability, and political, economic, and social progress.